once you're out there, now you're in the weightless environment, and that's got to be have its own set of challenges because you learn about physics, how every action has an equal and opposite reaction that they teach you in school. Now you get to really experience it without being encumbered by gravity. So describe that. You know, this is my best description. It, it does take a little bit of adapting for the first few hours and what have you. It's the closest you'll ever be in your life to flying like Superman 24 hours a day. And I don't mean that to be trivial. It, it, it's the uh, when uh, f first few hours of flying in space, for the only and the, the first time and the only time in my life, I remembered what it was like to have the joy of being a five-year-old boy again. Nice. And when you guys are training for this, you have to do that in, underwater, right? Is that, is that what I heard? If you're doing a spacewalk, right. The best simulation that we've come up with for this weightless environment is being in a swimming pool and taking advantage of a concept we call neutral buoyancy, uh -huh. which is basically a way for us to put an astronaut in a training version of that space walking suit, put weights all around it, mm -hmm. and get it to sink and, and float in place in the middle of the water column. And that's, you know, they're basically, you're floating in the middle of the water. You don't have gravity to help you at that point because of the way we've weighted the suit. Mm -hmm. And again, that is the best, most realistic simulation we've been able to come up with for right, our spacewalkers. Yeah. I've seen footage of it. And so that's where you learn to do all the different functions and perform different tasks and so on. And you really have to be careful about how each thing is done. It has to be very precise, am I right? Yes, yeah. Um, particularly... For the spacewalkers who went up and did the construction of the International Space Station, right. some of their uh, tasks were pretty involved, right. a little complex. And they definitely had to pay attention to what they were doing. And it's not just the task that you're doing. You have to pay attention to where have I tethered myself, mm -hmm. attached myself to the space station. I have this long safety tether that's, mm -hmm. you don't want to make it uh, get wrapped around my legs in any way. So there are whole other things that you have to pay attention to that are directly related to your safety, mm -hmm. in addition to all the activities that you got to accomplish during that spacewalk. Right, right. And now I see they have the freeform uh, jetpack where they're actually out there without a tether. That's, uh, yeah. not they're, they're always tethered. Yeah, they they're are. always oh, tethered. Okay, so we did have the, what was called the MMU, mm -hmm. which is uh, not flying anymore, but at the bottom of the spacesuit mm -hmm. is a mini jet pack. Mm -hmm. So if, for some reason, they came unattached from the space station structure, they can, they can fly themselves back with nice. that, that yeah. jet pack. Little, little extra insurance policy. Yeah. Fortunately, yeah. we've never had to use it, for good, real. Good, good, good. Now, for, any, for anybody who may not be aware, what was your specific mission when you guys went yeah. up there? What exactly was it that you guys were trying to accomplish when you guys went up there? go first? Um, for me, it was uh, transporting an American crew member to the Russian Mir space station, transferring cargo. Um, we flew around the vehicle to try to find the source of an atmospheric leak within the thing. And in general, the Mir program was to, were really flight tests mm -hmm. to learn how to rendezvous and dock with a space station and to develop, begin to develop the procedures and the technology to build the International Space Station. Now, now what's... What's next? What, what, do you, what do you think is, is there left to do as far as what, what's out there, as far as exploring maybe other planets, maybe? Uh, what the exploring other planets, yeah, uh, trying, to, trying to send humans to Mars. I think that's the next grand challenge in the realm of human spaceflight, because technically it's very hard. Mm -hmm. We do not have answers to all the technical challenges that we face in sending humans to Mars. First and foremost, we need to develop ways to travel to Mars faster. Yeah. The current That's a propulsion long time frame. System. Yeah, the current propulsion systems we have really limit us. And second, we need to protect the astronauts from radiation. Ah, uh, yeah, right. So once we get away from the protection provided by the Earth's magnetic field, space is a very hazard envi hazardous environment for humans. And so until we have, I think, good answers for those two technical challenges, it's going to be a while. Uh, it, it will be harder for us to get to Mars and have the mission be successful. And is, is, is the atmosphere in Mars, is it livable to where a human, a human can, can live? Is, is, no, I mean, no, that's, no, no, no. That's, that's another thing that you have to uh, study. Have to provide for that once you arrive, and there has to be an environment created to yes. be able to yep. hang out there. But you have, uh, within the atmosphere, the atmosphere on Mars is like the atmosphere on Earth at about 100,000 feet. So obviously you can't just go open the door and go out there and breathe. Right. But it, it does have uh, some water vapor in it. 
there is oxygen and hydrogen uh, out there, not a whole lot of hydrogen. But within the soil, within the permafrost of Mars, there's a lot of water in the right. form of ice. So if you think about water, H2O, mm -hmm. you break that apart, you have hydrogen and you have oxygen. You can breathe the oxygen. And what, are the space, what did the space shuttle main engines run on? Liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. So you can also make rocket fuel. That's true. So You'll be able to get back. We haven't solved all of the issues, but but there are a lot of materials in situ on the planet today that would allow us the opportunity to do some pretty great things from both an exploratory and perhaps even, you know, settle the place and establish human life in another body within the solar system. Well, there you go. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Last question. Here's my here's my nerd question. nerd question, and I don't even know I don't even know if the two of you are qualified to answer this, but I have to I have to know oh, this. We're probably nerdy enough. <laughs> okay, I have to know this. They're, they're For those of you who may not know, in 2006, the astronomers and scientists got together and they came up with the conclusion that Pluto is not a planet. <laughs> it's been demoted. Now, all my life, when I was young, I studied my planets, Mercury, Mars, Venus, Saturn, I can go on, Jupiter, and Pluto was among them. Now, it's not a planet all of a sudden. What happened? What, how, does, how, how does... I know the answer to this. Well, well uh, somebody yeah. please. Pluto got a raw deal. <laughs> <laughs> it got shafted. But how does that come about when all your, all your life, you're, you're, you know, you're, you're taught this that Pluto's plan now all of a sudden... Well, like it's Pluto's fault. If it hadn't been so far away from the sun and yeah. so small so right. and so is. cold, right. it probably never would have happened. Yeah. But, you know, I think it's also an example of how technology evolves, and as it does, it allows us to learn more information. So we've studied Pluto a little bit more, and now the astronomers have come to the conclusion that it doesn't quite meet the definition of planet, planet mm -hmm. but we'll call it a dwarf planet a instead. Dwarf. So I don't ask, I'm, I just like to say to the kids, I was an astronaut, I am not an astronomer. <laughs> Other A word, astronaut, not astronomer. But hey, yeah, yeah. sorry Pluto. Sorry Pluto. Uh, Pluto. Pluto got the short end of the stick on that one. <laughs> well, you know, from what I understand. Wait, wait a minute, so. all right, so let's wrap it up. It's been a pleasure meeting you guys. Likewise, thank you thank very you much. Thank you so much, thank, thank you for your service. Much. We enjoyed it.